Are you not sick of it? Are you sick of it? Do you think, like, no, isn't that like I wants to talk about Tower of Power? Or are you still really pleased about it? Or how do you feel about, about it? About playing Tower of Power? Yeah. Oh, you know, it was like, it was, you know, like, like my family or something. Oh, great. Like, right. where's the place you grow up? You know? Yeah. It was like having, like, a ten brothers. <laughs> no. It was crazy. It was really crazy, you know, because it was, you know, we were like pirates or something on the road. It was, um... It wasn't like it is now. It's all corporate, and everybody's like, "Of course." Is it is it true? Because we heard that we like Tom and I. We studied in in Berkeley, and they told us that in the seventies, like, it was actually quite at times quite rough. You know, like getting the money out oh, of club on us, and it wasn't like one, today. One you know, you got, check and, oh, uh, there was a time where we played, and the guy didn't want to pay us, and the road manager came in. He said, "Get on the bus." We all got on the bus, and he came in carrying like two giant paper bags full of cash. It was all singles and fives. Oh my god. <laughs> He was covered in sweat. You hired. He was. He had his third degree black belt. You know. We hired. Oh, you hired. You hired a karate expert to be your road manager because you needed somebody who would wow. actually get you paid. Is you it know? true that one of the singers of Pada you got jail because yeah, he shot someone? Yeah, he's in jail. Really? That's not a myth. That is true. No, all oh, three people. Oh my god. god. Yeah, and a bad drug dealer. I uh, I had a friend uh, who was James Brown's road manager in the last phase of his life, and, yeah. he, and he said that to the end of his days. He had to be paid in cash before Absolutely. the game. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. In cash, no checks, give me the money before I go on. So are you Aretha Franklin, me now? Are Aretha you Franklin like paid, <laughs> paid her musicians in cash at the end of the game. Oh, yeah? Like a friend of mine was her MD for a while, and he said you'd line up outside of her hotel room, right. and her bodyguard would bring you in one at a time, and she'd be sitting up on her bed in a robe with a pile of cash on the bed. And, right. And she'd count out, like, the each musician's money, you'd say, thank you, Miss Franklin, and you take your money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was like, it was, you know. The queen is dispensing. <laughs> when I was on, the, when I, I was, my first soul band that I was in, the band leader would do this, and that meant you got, you were getting fined $5. Like, right. if you made a mistake, you... Come on, did oh. they really do that? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. There so many times, like, James yeah. Brown saying, like, I got you, to Cla to Chabo, or whoever, on drums, yeah. you know, if he missed a cue, and he would say, I got you, I got you, you got, like, five bucks off. Yeah, 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 you yeah. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. I so many there was times. one guy I worked for, he would do it, and it was like, he, you knew you weren't going to make the money he was offering. Right. Because by the end of the week, he'd figured out how to reduce your salary enough so he could afford you. Right. <laughs> Genius. Uh, <laughs> that I mean, is just cool. I was, I was 16, and I didn't, you know, I didn't know any better, and right. nobody did. You know, it was wow, just the way man. you did it. Yeah. Yeah. That is a great business model. <laughs> no, it was rough. It was a rough and tumble thing. Yeah. And when you traveled back then, we didn't travel like one of those buses with the bunks in it. We traveled on a bus. You know? Bus bus. The bus. <laughs> like like a school bus. <laughs> like a like a no, it was like a, it was like a greyhound. Right. It was just like on a regular coach. Oh, oh, okay. It's a regular bus, you know. And we would do like you know twelve hours of a stretch on a bus, oh, you know, man. playing cards and hanging out. You know, I used to sit and talk to the bus drivers so they wouldn't nod off. You know, they had the CB radio, and right, you know, right. it was like it was a whole thing, you know, it was really interesting. Yeah. But it was like being a pirate, you know, it was like the roadies would have fights with other roadies, you know, battling for space on the stage. They'd have like fisticuffs and stuff. Really? Like, real shit, yeah. Yeah, it was not unusual. What, was it media like that too? <laughs> it, it, it's like, that you guys kind of like a tough guy, is that Well, or is that a you know, we were, you know, we were, we were people... It's, most of the band, none, we were like, you know, working class kids. We weren't like, you know, it wasn't like a, um, this wasn't like an elite operation, you know. <laughs> it, was, it was, you know, I mean, we weren't like hardcore criminals or anything like that, but we were all like, you know, we'd all had our little experiences with mm. this stuff. And we were, you know, uh, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't uh, pure like the group we saw. You know, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, it, it was, but we weren't at the same time. We weren't like um, hooligans or ruffians. Yeah. We were just... Um, you're just trying to get over. Trying to get over, exactly. And musicians usually are the ones that are like the lovers, not the fighters, you know. So right. we were the ones that were trying to avoid <laughs> getting beat up. Yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. You know, and you can you know, you it was obviously, you know, you had an opportunity to meet the ladies and you know, it's like that was always a good thing about being a musician. Right. Like, meet the ladies. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, <laughs>